Hello everyone, welcome to a special CUBE conversation here in the Palo Alto studios for the CUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE Media The Cube, and co-host The Cube. My next guest is Adrian Scott, who is the CEO of Soma Capital, head of technology of Decent.bet. You can get the idea of what that's going to be all about, but uh, industry uh, legend, yeah. star on the big screen, good to see you, thanks for coming in. Thank, thank you, John, it's great to see you. I'm glad I wanted to talk to you because I know you've been doing a lot of traveling, you've been living in Panama and overseas, outside the US, mainly around the work you've been doing on the crypto side, obviously mm -hmm. blockchain and, and with the startup Decent.bet, a lot of great stuff, but congratulations on a successful initial coin offering. Thank you. Um, great stuff, but also you're you know, also notable in the industry, an initial investor in Napster, mm -hmm. my, our generation, you know, first P2P, the first renegade, you know, break down the mute movie business, but the beginning of what we're now seeing as that decentralized revolution, but you've seen yeah. many ways of innovation. Yeah. Um, you've seen them come and go, but this one in particular, blockchain, decentralized internet, decentralized applications, crypto, mm -hmm. pretty awesome. And a lot of young guns are coming in, a lot of older experienced alpha entrepreneurs are coming in mm -hmm. like yourself and, and we're looking at it too. What's your take on it? I mean, how do you, how do you talk to people that are like, well, hey, you know, this is just a scam on the ICO side. Is this real? Is it a bubble? Share your, your, your vision on what this is all about, this mm -hmm. whole mega trend, crypto, yeah. decentralized. And, and I'll also add, in, in addition to what you mentioned, the other neat thing here is, is just the global nature of it. Because we're so used to being Silicon Valley centric and, and having to you know, dig around for funding here. And, and also looking only at talent that would move here. Uh, whereas with this whole new industry, it's very global. There's global teams, international teams, and and you know some some of the Silicon Valley folks are are just struggling to stay relevant and and stay in the game. But um, so so that's a fascinating aspect to this new revolution as well. Yeah, and also you know the thing about mm -hmm. I love about this market is very efficient. It takes it, it yes. takes away inefficiencies. And venture capital right mm -hmm. now and private equity are being disrupted. That's where the arbitrage is. Hence the ICO bubble. But mm -hmm. there is real legit opportunities. You have Soma Capital. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an investment fund that mm -hmm. you're doing uh, in token investments on. The global nature is interesting. I want to just ask you about this because mm -hmm. my view is it changes valuation, it changes valuation mechanisms, mm -hmm. it changes the makeup of the venture architecture, it makes up of how people recruit teams, the technology used, and with open source. I mean, this is a first time view at a new landscape. You can't mm -hmm. take a pattern match model to this, your thoughts. Uh, agree completely, um, and and the efficiency you mentioned uh, in, uh, applied to teams and surfacing engineering talent and the, the mathematical minds that can handle crypto internationally. Uh, the formation of teams internationally online is actually something special as well. So with Decent Bet, our team, our founding team includes folks from the US, Panama, Australia as well, who met up in, in a Facebook chat group. And that's how they initially connected and they, they didn't know each other physically and before this uh, connection online. And, and that led to uh, this project, a uh, decent bet, an ICO and, and so on. So it's-, it's You uh, created value innovation. from essentially a digital workforce. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it yeah. reminds me of like in the old days you'd chat and mm -hmm. it wasn't a lot of face to face, but then now there's video gaming culture. Mm -hmm. You know, you come in, hey, you want to play a game? People don't even know each other and get a visual and also an immersive experience with each other. Mm -hmm. This is now the application for entrepreneurial equations. So this is kind of gaming. The game is startups. So, so how, are you, how are you looking at this and how are you yeah. investing in it? Uh -huh. What are some of the things and what can people learn from mm -hmm. what we're seeing in this new gamified, mm -hmm. if you will, you know, world of starting companies? Well, I think one of the things you alluded to there is, has really become uh, visible, which is the importance of video as a medium. And, and I'm still absorbing and, and adjusting to that myself. Uh, for example, we, we do video communications, we do conversations um, at Decent Bet of the, of the founding team, and it really connects to the community. And it's so important. Um, and and I'm, I'm still absorbing it, like I mentioned, because I'm just so used to publishing articles that are very clearly written in detail and so on. We just did a, an AMA video, an Ask Me Anything video in Las Vegas with the, the, the executive team. And it went for 80 minutes answering the questions that the community had all submitted. Yeah. 
and and I just try and imagine that five years ago, it, it's a it's um, it's yeah, a new no way blogging, of relating. Link and back to the only thing you can do is blogging. Yeah, and then write yeah. a perfect blog post or white paper, exactly. and that was your who you were. Yeah, not anymore. It's more community driven. It, exactly, and and that video as as a piece of it is, has become so so important uh, as a way of communicating the character of, of the team. And, and before we get into decent mm -hmm. that, I want to yeah. do a drill down. I think it's a great use case, and again, congratulations mm -hmm. on great work there. Um, I want to ask you about something that mm -hmm. I've been fascinated with because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, our generation, we grew up on open source when it was, mm -hmm. you know, second class this and now it runs the whole world as first, first tier, first mm -hmm. class citizen in the software world. Yeah. The role of the community was really important in software development because mm -hmm. that, that kept a, uh, 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 it kept a balance, it kept, there was governance, there was consensus. Yes. These are words that you hear in mm -hmm. the crypto world. And now whether it's content and or ICO, the role mm -hmm. of the community, and certainly areas that's out of control on the ICO side, people are cracking down on certainly, like mm -hmm. you see Facebook and Twitter trying to do something, but you can't stop the wisdom of the crowd. The role of the community in this crypto uh, um, decentralized market, mm -hmm. ICOs and whatnot, is super important. Can you share your thoughts and mm -hmm. color commentary on why the community is so important, how do you deal with it? Mm -hmm. any, any best practice yeah. either through scar tissue or uh, successes, share uh, your thoughts oh on yeah. this. Oh yeah, it's it's totally um, it become a factor and it's 24 seven, right? So when you are running a crypto project, you need your community management team to be there in the community channels 24 seven. You need to have somebody there and they need to be at a certain level that they can handle the challenging questions. And we've definitely had moments where we wonder, we, we have people who try to create FUD potentially, you know, uh, and bring up stuff and bring it up again later and whatnot. And, and we need to be proactive. So yeah. when questions come up, we're there to be able to explain, okay, here's where you can see this on the blockchain. You can verify it yourself. Uh, and, and sometimes it happens you know, when the team is just about to get on a plane <laughs> and, and be out of internet communication for a while. So it's, it's, a, it's a real challenge and, and there's, been some, there's been the voice of experience. Uh, so talk about um, how you guys connect, mm -hmm. because obviously being connected is important for the community access, but also mm -hmm. with connection increases the service area for hacks. Yeah. You guys carry in five burner phones each, mm -hmm. how do you handle email? How mm -hmm. have you guys dealt with um, the whole you know, there is a lot of online activity, certainly mm -hmm. people trying to do some spear phishing or whatever yeah. tactics there are. Telegram has been littered with a lot of spoofing mm -hmm. and whatnot. So all this is going on, you've got to have access communication, mm -hmm. but there's a safety component that could have really big impacts to mm -hmm. the, uh, these businesses that aren't tokens because mm -hmm. hacking is, can be easy if you don't protect yourself. We really like Signal app uh, as a communications medium. There's a new one uh, starting to grow now called Threema, which is, is pretty interesting. Um, Telegram it, we, is, is just a real challenge and it's unfortunate because it's now become this metric um, How many people that, on that, that investors like to look at the size of, of the Telegram group, but we don't e actually have a Telegram group for Decent Bet. Yeah. And we've used Slack. We are uh, going to be rolling out a uh, in, uh, internally hosted uh, Slack replacement soon based on Rocket Chat. We really like Rocket Chat. Um, as you mentioned, there are there are spear phishing. You know, we we do see that. Um, and one of the nice things is, you know, a few years ago you had trouble convincing a team to take security seriously. <laughs> but you know, when you have team members who may have lost ten thousand dollars in in a or hack more. or more. Or more yeah. You know, there's no question that this needs to be a priority and, and everybody buys in on it. Yeah. So that's, that is one net positive out of this. Well, let's talk about mm -hmm. Decent Bet, a fascinating use case. Um, it's, in, it's in the gaming area, gaming as in like uh, betting. Mm -hmm. um, um, my friend Paul Martino invested, I think, in DraftKings, one of those other companies, I forget which one it was. Mm -hmm. um, in the U.S. it was regulatory issues, but you know, outside the U.S. where I think you guys are, mm -hmm. um, there's not as much issue. Perfect use case for tokens, in my opinion. So. Tell a little, take a minute to explain Decent Bet, mm -hmm. uh, what you guys are all about, and talk about the journey of conception, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, when you guys conceived it, mm -hmm. to ICO. Yeah. Decent Bet was founded about a year ago by the CEO, Jedediah Taylor, who developed a, an interesting idea and, and, and plan. So the neat thing about Decent Bet is, first of all, you have the uh, the, all the benefits of the Ethereum blockchain in terms of verifying transactions, verifying the houses take. Uh, additionally, 
what decent bet does is distributes all the profits of the casino back to the token holders nine ninety five percent goes as proportionally and then five percent is awarded in a lottery so there's there's no profit for any decent bet entity it all goes back to the token holders so you use the token to play by gambling but you can also lock use your the token to convert into house shares for a quarter and participate in, in so the, the house, house always wins that's a good model right yes so, so you that, could become the house through mm -hmm. the tokens exactly so the motto oh, we use is our house is your house <laughs> <laughs> don't bet against the house yeah. all right so talk about the so mm -hmm. i love love the gambling aspect mm -hmm. of it i think that's going to be a winner yeah. um, tech involved mm -hmm. um, ico process bumps uh -huh. learnings mm -hmm. things you could share with folks yeah um, so on the technology uh, one of the neat things we are doing is we do offer a slots game which is is a primary <laughs> component of, of online gambling and casinos uh, a, a pretty dominant piece of the action uh, but if you are going to do a simple uh, slots game on the blockchain and wait around for blocks to be mined you're not going to have a great experience because you're going to be waiting around more than you're going to be clicking that button so what we use is a technology called state channels which allows us to do a, a session kind of on a side channel so to speak and through the state channel at the end of the session you post back the results so you get the verifiability of the blockchain but without the delay so that's a, a major difference that's uh, off chain right yeah it's chain, kind of it's off chain yeah it's so kind you're of managing the latency of the chain so you still experience mm -hmm. and then get to preserve it on the chain exactly okay. yeah uh, in terms of the ico experience uh, we uh, initiated the ico end of september ran for a month uh, raised more than uh, 52,000 ether, um, so very productive um, uh, ICO process, but with actually some interesting details. So the ICO structure limited the amount that a particular address could purchase in the first phases to $10,000 worth and then $20,000 worth with the idea of getting the tokens into the hand of, of People are going to potentially use them for, yeah. for betting. More the not merrier just, for you. Not, yeah. No one taking down allocations, big players. Exactly, not just for the whales take yeah. all kind of uh, things. So that was an uh, interesting structure. And, and that and worked difference. well? Yeah. All right, talk about the, um, the dynamic of uh, post-ICO, because now you guys mm -hmm. are building. Can you give an update mm -hmm. on the state of where you guys are at with the product, mm -hmm. availability, mm -hmm. how that's going? Because obviously you raised the capital through mm -hmm. the ICO. Um, democratize it, if you will, through a clever uh, mechanism, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. Now what happens? Now what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think we're doing pretty well in terms of hitting milestones and, and showing progress compared to a lot of projects. Uh, we released uh, our test net with slots and then Sportsbook at the beginning of January and mid-January for Sportsbook. And uh, we also did some upgrades with our wallet. We released that. Uh, for, for some enhanced usability and handling during high peaks on, on the Ether network, Ethereum network. And then uh, also um, our moving to, to mainnet. So we, we did some newer versions of the test When's net. When's the mainnet coming? Mainnet is coming out end of April. And we're, we're on track with that. Great, awesome, yeah. congratulations. Congratulations, great job. 52,000 Ether, great, great raise there. Mm -hmm. uh, and an awesome opportunity. Soma Capital, mm -hmm. you're investing now. What do you look for for uh, deals? Mm -hmm. uh, there's more money chasing good deals now, as we can see. There's been a flight to quality, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great global landscape still. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking for? And mm -hmm. advice to folks who are looking to do a token uh -huh. uh, sale. What's your big big thing? We look for our real projects. So, <laughs> uh, and and there are not that many out there. So we do look for uh, a, a real use case that makes sense because. Um, there's a lot of folks out there just sticking blockchain tag onto onto yeah. anything. Um, so it, it and like it's Kodak, not just, for instance. Yeah, Kodak's yeah. The, the prime example. Yes. Um, so there are uh, you know projects out there doing interesting things. Uh, Guardium is is doing some neat things in terms of 911 response and opening that up and and pre creating an alternative to government services. Uh, there's Workcoin, which did you is, invest in Guardian? Yeah, yeah and great. I interviewed them yeah. at, uh, in Puerto Rico. Okay, great, yeah, yeah. Great project. So very interesting. I was recently uh, giving a talk at a university in Guatemala and um, 
the students there at business school really res it really resonated the message there to them about okay you know government 911 is is maybe not the ultimate solution for getting help when you need it well i think there's a lot of this mm -hmm. ai for good concept going to blockchain for good mm -hmm. because yeah. you're seeing a lot of these easy low hanging fruit applications mm -hmm. around these old structural institutions yes and that's where the action is right i mean do you yeah. agree yes um, and, and the other thing we're looking at is not just blockchain. So I really like talking about the field more is crypto. And um, I, I have a little video I did on, on calling it kind of decentralized um, crypto enabled applications or platforms. Mm -hmm. So beyond blockchain, we have DAGs, um, directed acyclic graphs. Yeah. Uh, one like interesting- Like Hashgraph. Yeah, Hashgraph's hash a DAG, isn't it? Um, it's kind of a dag, Hashgraph. Yeah, um, so I'm not a huge fan of Hashgraph. Uh, one that I do like is called Gould, G-U-L-D, uh, which is, um, again, thinking beyond the blockchain. Because yeah, yeah. we, we get so tied into blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. What does beyond the blockchain mean mm -hmm. to you? What, thinking beyond the blockchain, what does that mm -hmm. mean to you? So, so the, 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 the proof of, um, of work process, the mining process, the creating new blocks process is one way of doing things. But we have all these other things going on in crypto like the the signing process um, and so on so you can use those in a dag in in different you know a different architecture than just this mining new blocks uh you know mental model mm -hmm. um, and so that can be used for for different use cases for publishing for group consensus and and so on and so gould is, is an example of a project that where it looks like there's there is something real there, um, and and that that's a, a very interesting project. Advice for mm -hmm. folks that are looking at token raises, because again, mm -hmm. we've said this in the cube many times. People mm -hmm. know this is my I'm, I'm beating this drum. You got the startups that see mm -hmm. an opportunity, which yeah. is fantastic, and then the other end of the spectrum, you got the oh shit, we're out of business. Let's pivot, mm -hmm. throw the hail mary, put blockchain on it, yeah. crypto, and get an ICO or get mm -hmm. some going. And then you got these growth companies that are either self-funded and or growing in mm -hmm. it that have decentralized kind of uh, feel to it, has an architecture that's compatible mm -hmm. with tokenization. Yeah. So we see those three categories. Do you mm -hmm. agree, am I missing anything mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of the profile and which ones do you like? Well, I, I think one thing that, that we need to look at in each of those cases is, is decentralization actually happening? in the project and, and are people actually thinking about decentralization? Because it can be scary for a traditional company because if it truly becomes decentralized, you're not controlling it anymore. And so if you're based that on control, is, then you're, it's mm -hmm. incompatible. And that's the real Hail, Hail Mary, right? <laughs> yeah. When you give up that control, if you yeah. give it up. So we have you know, examples coming out where you know Ripple is is running just a few nodes, Neo is running a few more, and you know things that are not really decentralized, and they're saying, well, we're going to be, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. it's Will like we're ever? going to be in the future. Yeah, and that's always the and question: Will they ever? So, be? So they already made their money. Yeah. Certainly, Ripple's done well, but I mean, what's the incentive to go? Yeah, decentralized. Yeah. So if if you are creating a new project, the the benefit from this architecture. You know, beyond the money, is to think about it in that decentralized way and and figure out token economics that work in that uh, in that context and yeah. that paradigm, and that's really where the challenge is, but also really where some of the benefits can rise because that is what enables truly new ways of doing things. Talk about the dynamic because obviously mm -hmm. I live in Silicon Valley. I've been here 19 years, going on 20. Um, you know, I moved from the East Coast, and basically, if you weren't here, mm -hmm. this is where the action is. If you're yeah. in, in the sports of tech, this is where all the, the athletes are. Yeah. That's now changed, as you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. on, on the, when we started. It's everywhere. Now, also, there's jurisdictional issues. I mean, yes. the U.S., one guy's told me, the U.S. is turning into Europe, all these mm -hmm. regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as much free capital as you think. Uh -huh. And it, we certainly know that. I mean, the SEC yeah. and others are putting the clamp down. Yeah. But how, structuring the uh, token mm -hmm. is a concern, right? Or consideration yes. Yes. and a concern. So, you know, U.S. entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what should they do in your opinion? Mm -hmm. And if someone's outside the U.S., what do they do? What's the playbook? What's the, um, or, or my playbook, what's uh, yeah. the best path right now? 
Um, leave the U.S. <laughs> move, move, move Tell out my wife of the U.S. Four kids. Yeah. Yes. See you yes. later. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's real legit. Come, I mean, that's come and check out Panama. Um, one of my friends is is building a blockchain incubator, crypto incubator. Um, I mean, I think if what's it like to move out of the United States? Give some. Mm -hmm. I know you just recently went to Panama for this, yeah. but what's it like? I mean, are, is it scary down uh -huh. there? I mean, is it entrepreneurial mm -hmm. friendly? What's the vibe? What's the scene like? Take, mm -hmm. take, take a minute yeah. to explain. So that. I've actually been out out there twelve years now in Panama. Okay. Um, one of the neat things, you want a place that has an international outlook, an international perspective. So you want to think in terms of a Dubai, a Singapore, a Hong Kong. And so Panama has some aspects of that. It's not perfect, but it does have that international perspective thanks to the canal. Yeah. So it has, yeah, you know, 100 years. It also years. has the Panama <laughs> Papers, which is a negative uh -huh. blowback for those guys. So yeah. it's a safe place to do commerce, in your opinion? Um, it is a nice geographic base to do international commerce. So you don't necessarily want to rely on the local jurisdiction, but in terms of a, a geographic base mm -hmm. uh, that is U.S. time zone, U.S. dollar, uh, yeah. no hurricanes, yeah. it's a very interesting place. Yeah, Puerto Rico's got the hurricanes, we know it's, that. <laughs> yeah. Final thoughts, mm -hmm. just overall perspective, mm -hmm. you, um, you know, You've been around the block, we've been mm -hmm. around the block, both of us have. I mean, I kind of have these pinch me moments like, damn, this is a great time, I wish I was 22. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have those, what's it like? How do you, how do you explain this environment? I mean, uh, uh, if people ask you, hey, you know, what was it like in the old days? Yeah. You know, when you have to provision all your own stack and do mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty in interesting right now. What's your, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're going through an interesting moment right now where we are getting to a point where the, cent the forces of centralization are coming against the forces of decentralization, and that includes from the regulatory and as well as the business side. And so I think um, it is important as we look where to dedicate our efforts to, to really find ways to increase the decentralization as a factor that encourages creativity and entrepreneurship. Yeah, it really is a perfect storm. I think it's a great environment. Mm -hmm. Decent. Uh, decent dot B -E -T, bet. Uh, make your bets. Uh, any updates on um, how to get tokens, mm -hmm. um, what people can expect? Give a quick mm -hmm. plug in for DC. Yeah, um, check out our website. We've got links to exchanges. Um, the token is currently listed on Cryptopia, uh, Hit BTC, and a couple other exchanges. Um, and uh, yeah, please, please check out the test net. Please check out the white paper and, and just learn about how we how you know this this protocol works this platform works and I I think um, it, it is very inspiring in, as, as a structure right. that a involves Adrian Scott here inside the cube uh, Soma Capital also experienced entrepreneur himself technologist uh, and has been through the ICO process head of technology at Decent Dot we'll be checking it out it's the cube conversation I'm John Furrier here in Palo Alto California thanks for watching. <laughs>